What's up everybody, I'm Kirk and welcome back to the channel. Developed and published by Ninja Robot Dinosaur, excellent name, Bunker Punks is a twitchy, post-apocalyptic, roguelite first-person shooter with an emphasis on base building and chunky pixels. <laughs> Bunker Punks was actually released back in 2018, and I was totally unaware of it until a few of my awesome audience members recommended it to me. So when the game happened to show up in a recent Steam sale for quite the stellar price, I jumped to the chance to further refine my indie shooter palette. Plus, I've been itching for a good roguelite lately. Was Bunker Punks just the thing to scratch that itch? Well, let's put on our robot killing faces and find out. But before all that, a quick message. Hey, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that you're watching this video because you love first-person shooters, am I right? Well then, you'd be happy to hear that there is a feature-length documentary on the horizon all about the genre we love so very much. First-person shooter, the documentary, is aiming to chronicle the entire history of FPS games, from Maze War to Eternal. Tech milestones, gameplay, design, culture, the birth of Deathmatch, all of it. This three-hour, yes, three-hour documentary is coming to us from the same team behind other acclaimed pop culture docs, like The Last Action Heroes and In Search of Darkness, Part 1 and 2. And we'll feature interviews with over 40 key figures of the genre. Scott Miller, Cliffy B, Warren Spector, John St. John, and oh yes, John Romero. FPS just launched its Kickstarter, and if you're interested in helping out, or just want more info, please be sure to use my exclusive affiliate link down in the description. Come on guys, let's get this sucker made, because I think it's gonna be sick. Alrighty, let's begin. Bunker Punks takes place in the near future, and what do you know, the world has gone to hell. Wars, food shortages, and pandemics have devastated the world's population. Fearing a massive loss in profits, the corporations of the world evacuate their shareholders and employees into fortified cities and underground bunkers, while the rest of humanity suffers the fall of civilization. After the fall, survivors of the apocalypse band together and form gangs, with the sole purpose of decimating these bunkers and all that stand within them. These gangs are known as Bunker Punks, and you control the Zero Sum Gang, a group of misfits hungry for some bloody corporate takedown. <laughs> Bunker Punks is not a story-driven experience, but it does feature an admirably fleshed out world, with an undercurrent of commentary on the corporate influence over America as well as the security state. Loading screens give tidbits about the events that led up to the world's end, along with backstory on your Zero Sum gang members, who all have wildly different backgrounds and distinct personalities, like the shotgun-wielding Texas boy Dallas, or the queen-like Cleopatra Rex, who acts like royalty no matter where she goes. Prepare yourself for royalty. Oh, and we can't forget the bouncy Cassidy, who looks like she would talk your ear off about her favorite anime, if they were still making it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. With its more satirical take on the apocalypse and eccentric group of characters, this is a game with a lot of personality, and it did elevate the experience for me. And the biggest compliment I can give it is that it left me wanting to know more about it and its colorful inhabitants. Eh, perhaps we'll get the chance to someday. When you first begin Bunker Punks, you'll find that it's very much a standard first-person shooter, and a solid one at that. Shooting mechanics have a good sense of impact and rhythm, and your punk is quick on their feet with a good hop in their step. You can get into some nice flow with the shooting. I quickly found myself bunny hopping about and weaving through enemy projectiles, the style of first-person shooting I find the most satisfying. <laughs> And depending on what difficulty you play on, there is a good challenge to be found here, with relentless enemies that will test your reflexes. However, it's after you beat the initial levels where the game gets real interesting, opening up the bunker building mechanics. Located under an abandoned gasoline station, the player is able to build up their own bunker in between the game's missions, or in this case, raids, in a manner similar to that of the base building of XCOM or even Fallout Shelter. Players can build new rooms for their bunker with the credits they collect during raids, and within those rooms they can purchase upgrades for their punks. Build an infirmary and you can upgrade your punk's health, as well as more elaborate upgrades Grades, like healing in the elevator between floors of a bunker. Build a firing range and you can improve your weapons, make them stronger. Build a gym and you can improve your stats, like the punk's speed and how many items they can carry in their backpack. In truth, the bunker building is really an elaborate upgrade menu with the individual rooms serving more as skill trees than 
habitats. Don't expect to be able to build some sprawling underground metropolis and get all simmy here. It's a cool idea though, and does add to the game's personality. Plus, I appreciate how it limits the player. For example, each room has the possibility of up to five upgrades, but you can only build three, making the player think about what kind of build they want for each run. After you do your bunker errands, you can choose your next raid on a Mario-esque overworld map. From there, equipping your punk and getting ready to rock and roll. Raids are made up of several floors the player will have to clear in order to be victorious. Obviously, if the player dies, they'll have to start that raid over with another punk. Lose all their punks and it's game over, forcing them to start over from scratch. Each floor you raid in whatever bunker you choose is symbolized by the type of loot you are most likely to find on it, giving the player the chance to choose their mission according to their needs. So, green cross medical floors will give you more health. Yellow shield security floors will give you more weapons and armor. Eyeball logistic floors give you more credits, and purple beaker R&D floors drop more tech, which are crucial. While collecting credits and loot during your raids is important, you have to keep an eye out for these purple tech chips. Tech is the only currency the player can take between runs. If you happen to die and have to start over, tech can buy new punks to join your crusade, weapons and armor to pick up, and rooms for your bunker. Your enemies are a plethora of mechanical menaces. Drones, self-destructing drones, drones that roll on the ground. Yeah, you kill a lot of drones in this game. But then you also have to deal with cybernetic proxy man agents, as well as the more imposing foes like giant mechs and some bad robo-dogs. <laughs> All enemies have distinct attack patterns, whether they be projectile attacks or more melee fare, that the player will need to memorize to be successful, and it does lead to a lot of satisfying combat. To progress, you have to eliminate the strongest enemy or enemies on that floor. So in early levels, the proxy man agents will be your main prey, whereas when you get further, your main targets will become a lot tougher and more intimidating. <laughs> Clearing a floor in a certain way can also earn you some bonus resources, either from speedrunning, taking out all the enemies, or both. So if you're fast or thorough, the game will reward you either way. Welcome to Dove City. Floors are procedurally generated, with each room separated by a long hallway, and the game does a decent job of providing the player with a variety of layouts and combat situations to keep things from getting stale. It's not perfect. At times, some of the larger enemies can get stuck in corridors, making them sitting ducks, and more annoyingly, sometimes you might open a door to find an enemy waiting there for you, like the explosive drones. A little cheap. I'm also a little on the fence about these long hallways separating everything. It's not hard to funnel enemies into them and get a little cheesy. I'm wondering if it might have been better to force players into a room by maybe locking the door behind them. Weapons don't hold a lot of surprises, at least initially. A pistol, shotgun, assault rifle, missile launcher, and baseball bat are available for you at the get-go. Naturally, as you progress, you can unlock more weapons with your tech, which are essentially stronger variants of your base weapons, like a six-shooter revolver in the pistol category or a sawed-off shotgun in the shotgun category, all of them differing by their fire rate and power. <laughs> For the most part, the weapons are fun to use across the board, but personally, I gravitated towards the shotguns, rifles, and explosives, specifically the assault shotgun, hunting rifle, and missile launcher. For me, I found most challenges could be thoroughly handled by one of these or a combination of them. And while it's cool the game has melee weapons, like this katana, I never found them to be as effective as the firearms, unless I was using a character that specialized in them. And frankly, it's better to keep the enemies at a distance, unless you're using the shotgun. Each punk differs by their stats and abilities, with some more suited to certain weapons than others, like Royce, who is geared towards melee weapons, and Molly, who is an ace with pistols. Each punk also has their own special ability that can be activated when this meter fills up on the bottom left, with up to three charges total, three uses. These aren't anything mind-blowing, a flash-in-the-pan ability often to buy the player a little bit of slack. For example, Cleopatra can freeze enemies for a second, and Dallas can throw up a shield that will absorb just one hit. When you begin the game, Game, your character's special abilities are not going to make that much of a difference. Further in though, you can unlock the passive abilities for your punks, which are a lot more helpful. These are things like Cassidy being able to double jump and Dallas gaining more health from pickups. Ultimate abilities though are where it's at. Only usable when the special meter is all the way full, these abilities range from stronger forms of the base special attacks to one-hit kills as seen with Cleopatra. While specials are take it or leave it, passive and ultimate 
limits can sometimes make the difference between a victorious run and a failure. Obviously, not all punks are created equally, and that especially goes for their ultimates. Some punks ultimates give them a huge advantage compared to others. For example, Cassidy's ultimate restores a good chunk of her health. But that's all part of the fun. You may save a certain punk for the end of your run, specifically because of their ultimate. In general, Bunker Punks does hit a sweet spot of balancing its tight FPS combat with its roguelite mechanics. I found myself addicted to the combat loop and definitely hooked to the grind for better upgrades. Sadly though, it will leave you wanting more. After a good 10 hours of playing, I suddenly found that I had purchased all of the tech upgrades with the only challenge ahead of me being the harder difficulty. Yes, I know there's a reason it's a roguelite and not a roguelike, but I guess I couldn't help but feel it could have been pushed further. Not necessarily in terms of more upgrades, and loot, but in terms of giving the player more things to do, and more obstacles to keep them on the edge of their seat. For example, I like that the missions are a good speed course of carnage, but I wondered if it would have been possible to give the players optional side objectives, like kill a certain amount of an enemy type or collect a certain type of loot for bonus credits. Perhaps an optional risky side bunker where the combat is more intense, but the loot is better. Status effects would have been cool to have here too. Basic ones like poison or slowing down the character would have been great, but an the obvious one would have been to take their abilities away for a short period of time. I'm not saying I'm unhappy with what's here. This is me saying I want more of it. I would have happily put another 10 or 20, 30 hours into this. That's how much fun I was having. Overall, I'd say in terms of an FPS, this game hits the mark. In terms of a roguelite, it's great until it runs out of steam. <laughs> In terms of graphics, Bunker Punk's art style goes for a minimalistic, blocky sprite design. There have been plenty of games that have used a similar look, and the easy comparators for me are the Tiny Tower mobile games and Fez. It's a charming look, although I question whether it's best suited for a first-person shooter. I feel like this type of style is better suited to games where the camera is fully pulled out. In fact, the one place where I thought the art style worked was in the bunker menu. Despite the lower quality in the sprites, the overall effect of seeing them together as if you're looking at a miniature is what gives the art style its charm. In first person though, I think some of that charm is lost. These sprites are not meant to be seen up close, and when you do, they just look messy. The worst offenders being the weapon sprites, which I thought looked blocky and underwhelming. Now, this is very much a subjective opinion. I could totally see people digging the way this game looks and not being bothered by the things that bothered me. And to be fair, I think the design of the enemies, along with their animations, look pretty good when seen at the appropriate distance, and I especially enjoyed the explosion effects. However, one area of the visuals that I was especially critical of, and that I think some people might agree, is the art direction for the levels. Remember when I was explaining that each level is defined by their loot type? For whatever reason, Bunker Punks doesn't take an extra step to try and theme these floors according to their label. A medical floor will pretty much look like a security floor, which will look pretty much like an R&D department. The same assets are always used throughout the game, and the problem with that is that things start to feel really samey. The first bunker is not going to look Look all that different from the last. It's a shame because I don't necessarily think it looks bad, I just think it could have had a lot more character. The music though is sick. Composed by A Shell in the Pit, Bunker Punk's soundtrack is a beautiful mishmash of rock and roll mixed with electronic and seasoned with country. It's a sound that fits the game's wild apocalyptic world, but also complements the action-intensive gameplay. And most importantly, it doesn't get old or annoying. At least it didn't for me. An important thing for a roguelite. Bunker Punks is a cool gem. Despite a few issues, it's a solid shooter and a solid roguelite, even if it's not the deepest. It's the type of game you can have a great afternoon or two with, or a fun thing to play in bursts whenever you have a little free time and just need to jump around and shoot something. It's also a game that I hope gets a sequel someday. I think there's a good foundation Ninja Robot Dinosaur, seriously great name, have built here, and I feel like there's a ton of room to build upon it, not only in terms of the rogue elements, but also in the shooting mechanics. The dev is currently working on their next original IP, so who's to say what the future of Bunker Punks is? But I am going to cross my fingers for a return to the Bunker Wasteland. Huh?
What are your thoughts on Bunker Punks? Is this something you'd be interested in, or have you already played it? Let me know in the comments. And as a reminder, please be sure to click on the link in the description for more info on the FPS documentary, and maybe consider supporting the filmmakers. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications on future uploads. It's a couple clicks for you, but a massive help for this channel. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there.